Hi everyone, I'm Miss Liz and welcome to Art Club. Today we're going to be creating a really pretty fantasy picture of a dragon with a castle in the background and it's on a mountain. And let me show you a few samples that I have. This one here. In here. So you might think that we're going to be using watercolor paints, but we're not. We're actually going to be using something called bleeding tissue paper. So I want to show you a little these samples one more time. This one has quite a few white spots on it, and sometimes that will happen when you're using bleeding tissue paper. And we can talk about it a little bit later. Uh, if you don't like some of those white spots, you can always go back in, wet it more tissue paper, and put more color on there. But we tried to make a few different samples so you have an idea of what you want to do for yours. So let's get right at it and find out what's inside your kit. You are going to have this blank piece of watercolor paper with the design right on there, a baggie full of bleeding tissue paper, and a squirt water bottle. So let me tell you a little bit about um, bleeding tissue paper. So it's not like regular tissue paper, it's a special type and it's called bleeding because when it gets wet and it's mixed with water, the, the color comes off of it, like it bleeds onto your paper. And then you get this look just like watercolors. So if you're working on this project from home and you did not pick up a kit from the New Lenox Public Library, just make sure when you go to buy your supplies that you buy bleeding tissue paper. All right, so before we start making a big mess, I want you to take your paper bag that your kit came in and lay it on your work surface because this does get messy. Grab a few paper towels to have on hand in case uh, your water starts to drip off the paper onto the table. Then you can take your baggie of uh, bleeding tissue paper and pour it out. Maybe you want to put it in a bowl or maybe you want to work on it for a little bit and separate your colors. But if a big wind comes through or maybe you sneeze, your tissue paper is going to go flying. So just make sure you have it contained in a little bit of an area, but you can also grab those colors that you need while you have your paper wet. All right, let's take one more look at the samples so you can be thinking about how you want to do your project. I think all of these samples look awesome. They're all the same yet different. So um, here we've got a dragon. Oh, here's still a little piece of tissue on there. So um, this dragon has a lot of yellow, red, and orange on it. And the castle is one color. Now you'll notice when you're making it, uh, you're not going to be able to color or paint or put bleeding tissue paper inside the lines. So we're really not going for that. You must be inside the line look. We are um, just going for a colorful, uh, blended look on our picture. So the castle is, yes, it's it looks like it's pink. It looks like it's a little bit purple. But we also get some of those colors on the outside. All right, so here's another one of the samples. You'll see different colors in different places. It's another red, orange, and um, yellow dragon. Of course, you can make yours any color you like. We've got pink, purple, brown, blue, many colors. You'll notice that um, the sky's got a little bit of blue, pink, purple, so just take a look at that. And then this one, I'm sure you were wondering about this one when I showed it to you earlier. It's got a lot of white spots. Sometimes that happens if you don't use enough water when you're squirting it on your paper. Sometimes you've got plenty of water on there and it just doesn't pull that, co that color off and put it on the paper. So you can always take more water, give it a squirt, and add more tissue paper on there. Then once that dries, you're gonna get that color 
it's going to come right off right on there. So let me just see real quick. See how it started already to turn a different color? So don't worry if once yours dry, it has all these white spots on it because there's a fix for that. I've got the camera in a good spot, so we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing you wanna do is think about what section do you wanna work on? Because you're not gonna spray your entire paper all at once. You're gonna work on a little piece at a time. So how about we work on the sky? So I recommend taking your water and squirting just a few spots on here, just so your tissue paper will stick. So I'm gonna start in this section here and I'm just gonna give it a few squirts. Then I'm gonna take my blue and I'm just gonna start adding it on there. Now I'm gonna put them on randomly, but you can do whatever you want. If you wanna have your sky one color, pick through all your tissue paper and See if you've got enough to spread it out and have it all one color. Maybe you wanna make the clouds a little bit lighter than the rest of the sky, then you can use your light blue paper. So I'm overlapping these a little bit. I probably might run out of blue paper. So um, maybe when you're doing yours, you wanna not put them so close together, but I think I might end up using some purple on the sky over here by the mountain. There, so now the tissue is starting to stick. So you wanna make sure you have enough water on there. So I'm going to just spray a little bit more, make sure that they look all wet, and then I'm gonna move on to this section right here. So I'm gonna give it a little spray and I'm going to look for some of the purples, the darker purples, and put those on there. So it looks like I might not have sprayed it just quite enough, so I'm going to give it another squirt so my paper doesn't start flying away if I sneeze or breathe too heavy. And then I'm going to add some light purple. Couple more squirts. So now I'm moving on to this middle section. So I'm going to squirt there. You can see where it's pretty wet here that the paint is starting to bleed off the tissue paper and move to the side. Yes, your um, paper is going to start to curl up a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. That's why it's always a good idea to keep our paper on this um, paper bag that we got our kit in. That way, if it makes a mess, it's gonna go right on there instead of on your table. Now, some of you might not want a blue sky. Some of you might want just to have multicolors everywhere on here. And, it, and that's good because that's what art is all about, putting what you express and what you think your sky is going to look like. So don't feel like you have to follow what I'm doing by putting all your blue in the sky. So since mine is bleeding quite a bit this direction since my paper's starting to curl, now I'm going to move over to this section of the sky right here. All right, take one last look at your sky section if that's what you're working on and go ahead and give it an extra squirt or two if you see any that look like they're not dry. And then I'm going to move on to another spot. I think this time I'm going to make my dragon multicolors. I think I'm gonna to try to use all the colors just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna start with his head and his neck, so I sprayed here. And I'm gonna start adding colors. So again, you'll see, I just laid over his um, horns one color. I put the red on there, 
So we're again, we're not trying to go in the lines. We're just putting that tissue paper on there and letting it bleed to see what, what it does. one up here. All right, so now I'm going to start working on his belly and down to his legs. So go ahead, give it a squirt. Some of these colors might even blend together to make an entirely new color. So I'm going to see how that works out. I just think this is a really fun project. And if you have a good time with it, you can get your own bleeding tissue paper and be really creative and make just about anything. Okay. All right. Now go ahead, see if any of them look like they're not wet enough and give it a little extra squirt. And now I think I'm gonna work on the castle. So I'm gonna look through my tissue. I'm gonna see what colors I have left. I might go with the red tones because I seem to have a lot of those. Let me put some together. All right, so now I'm gonna squirt the castle. Whoop. See how that just blew all my tissue paper. Fingers are getting messy. Yours probably will too, but if you wash really good with soap and water when you're done, it should be okay. So I've got two different tones of red that I'm sticking on here. Add a little bit of water. All right, so. We've got some green trees over here and some green grass down at the bottom. If you would like to make those green, you can do that. Um, I've got some green left, so I may do that. So I'm going to squirt my trees. I'm going to put some of the darker green there. Make a lighter green here. And now I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to hold my paper down for a minute while I add the green down here by the grass blades. I'll double check, see if, whoops, see if anything needs to be wet a little bit more. Just give it a squirt. And then I've got the mountain side here that needs to be done. And I think I'm gonna go with Oh, uh, let's see, I've got some brown. So I'm gonna pull that. Maybe I'll do brown and yellow and see how that looks. Maybe it'll be more of like a, a desert look, unlike this sample where it's more of a green mountainside. Give that a spray. Start adding. Yellow's left. Not a lot of brown. Maybe I'll try some black in there. Use this it looks like a little bit of a light pink on there and see what that does. Bottom piece down here, we can put some on. Go with blue and black. And I'm just hanging that off the edge there. All right, I think I'm gonna stop there for now. Let it dry and see how it looks. Um, you can keep working on yours and when you have it where you think you want it, then take one last look, make sure all the tissue paper is wet and give it a spray if it's not. And um, we'll check back in a little bit. Okay, it looks like mine is dry 
and it probably took about a half an hour or more. Mine seemed pretty wet when I was working on it, so it took a little bit longer to dry. Um, everyone's is going to be a little different. So now it's time to take off all the tissue paper and you are welcome to take yours over to the garbage can and just tip it over so that all the tissue paper falls into the garbage can and you don't have to pick it up later. But I'm just going to do it right here uh, so I don't have to move my camera. So you can just see it all dried up and it's just coming right off nice and easy. Right. And there is my picture. Now I do see once that all the tissue paper has come off, I do have a few white spots. It looks like um, it didn't take, but I think I like the placement of those. It makes it look really nice. How does yours look? If you want, if you have a lot of white spots, like this sample, you can go ahead and take some of your tissue paper that you did not use uh, previously and you can just do it again and add that on there, spray it and let it dry. So that's totally up to you, but I really like the way mine turned out. All right, one last look at this piece of art. I love the way it turned out. I really like the way my castle looks. It looks as if it's just glowing. I think it really turned out um, different. Like I loved the way these castles on the other samples turned out, but it's just so fun to see it all one color. And I'm imagining maybe, maybe the dragon um, shot some fire in and the uh, castle is glowing because it's on fire. Uh, well, thank you for joining me. I hope you had a good time with this project and I hope the bleeding tissue paper has inspired you to create more artwork with bleeding tissue paper. And uh, if you would like to share how yours turned out, please send it to me at youth at newlinuxlibrary.org or you can post it in the comment section of the Facebook post of this video. I hope to see you soon at the library. Thank you.